my technician checked this out so one of my technician brought this phone to me for repair according to him he told me that the phone is not booting so the dc to dc converter is it's not working so when you connect battery the dc to dc converter i see right here is heating up so come around come let me show you something so this ic right here is heating up this particular ic here is heating up so this is the dc to dc converter ic i'm going to uh, remove the dc to dc converter ic and then bypass the power to the power ic and the phone should turn on but the phone won't charge unless i change the dc to dc converter ic so if you have any question let me know in the comment section so let me get started my dear technician, first thing, I want to show you guys the proof. Check this out. I want to apply paste right now. Check this out. You can see I'm applying paste. I want you guys to see the proof that the DC to DC converter IC is not working. Check this out. You can see. You can see. The paste melt, meaning that the IC is not working. I know for sure a lot of technicians do not know the reason why we have DC to DC converter IC on the phone PCB. Today video, I'll be explaining everything step by step. Please sit down, relax yourself, subscribe to this channel, follow me for more videos. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. So without time wasted, let me start first thing understand that the dc to dc converter ic is an ic inside we have a whole lot of components right here you can see the diagram of the ic you can clearly see the connections from the diagram here you can see that we have switch pin we have a whole lot of pin here we have the v bus we have the switch we have the system we have the bat, we have a whole lot. We have the data plus, data minus, my data technician. You can see we have OTG. We have a whole lot of pin here. First of all, let me start from the V bus. The V bus receives voltage from the charger, which is the charger that you normally use to charge the phone. You can see that this IC can receive from 3.9 volts all the way to 14 volt are just three amps from the diagram here you can clearly see that this ic support double charging i mean this ic can use 9 volt or 12 volt to charge the battery my technician if i want to explain all the pin this video will take a whole lot of time so i'll only explain some important pins now let's talk about the otg inside this ic we have otg function the VBOS is responsible for the OTG function. The VBOS gives a reverse voltage. And the voltage is 5 volt at just 2.4 amps. You may ask Father Joe, explain how the OTG function works. Right here, we have the switch pin. After the switch pin, you can clearly see we have one UH. The one UH is an inductor. Or you can call it coil. The IC energizes the coil and uses the voltage to power OTG. So that is how OTG works. My data technician, if you look at this diagram, you can see that the battery voltage is connected to this DC to DC converter IC. One of the important of this IC is to save battery. This IC uses is switching technology. It's just like your backlight. The backlight uses a switching technology to boost the power from 0 volt to 50 volt. The same thing applies to this IC. This IC uses battery power to switch. The switching technology helps to save the battery power. This IC gives voltage. And the voltage, we call it the VPH voltage. On a phone PCB, we have different types of IC. We have the power IC, we have the network IC, we have the CPU, we have the EMMC IC, we have the RAM. 
This DC to DC converter IC give power. The power output from this DC to DC converter IC is called the VPH power. The VPH power goes straight to the power IC, network IC, and some other IC on the phone PCB. And at initial, when troubleshooting phone PCB, always check the DC to DC converter IC. Confirm if the IC is still giving power to the power IC. Confirm the VPH line. My technician, I will cut the explanation here so we can continue with the video. If you have any questions, feel free. Let me know in the comment section. Check the PCB very well. You can see I just do a jumper. I do the jumper from VBAT, which is battery voltage, to the VPH line. Check this out. You may ask Father Joe, why are you doing this? You're supposed to change the IC. I'm doing this because, number one, I don't have the IC. Number two, I want to be sure that the power IC and some other IC, which is the CPU, eMMC, and RAM of the phone, is still working. That's why I'm doing this. You can try this out to confirm the power IC and some other IC to be sure that they are working. But have in mind that when you bypass, the phone will not show charging again because the DC to DC converter IC is responsible for charging the phone. So take note, when you bypass, the phone will turn on, but the phone will not indicate charging or even charging the battery. My technician, feel free, ask me a question in the comment section. Right now, I'm checking. I'm feeling if there's any heat somewhere. Check this out. I tried to turn on the phone. The phone turned on, but nothing is showing on the screen. No backlight. Right here, you can see that a lot of components are not here. A lot of components are not here. So they remove a lot of components here. You can see the screen area. You can see all the resistors. So they have removed a lot. And if you check the PCB very well, you can see a lot of components will remove. So this is my DC machine and it's on right now. So let me try to turn on the phone to see whether it's going to on or not. So I've connected to my DC machine and let's go. So one, two, ready. Come on, I'll show the DC machine. One, two, ready and then go. Guys, you can see that the phone is turning on you can see the boot sequence you can see the boots you can see you can see the phone is 100 percent working check this out the phone is 100 percent working you can see the phone is turning on everything is working come and show me so the problem right now is from the resistors i have to work on the resistors but before I work on the resistors, I have to test a new screen because it, even the screen save is not good. The face of the screen was destroyed. So it's not good. They, are, they, are, they have worked on the screen flex, you can see. So it's not good. So I need to check on this. I need to contact the owner and then tell the owner a whole lot. If there's money, I continue. But for now, the phone is working. So you can use the method and then bypass to confirm if the power IC is still working. I'm sure you have learned something because a lot of people don't know how to bypass a DC to DC converter. You see, you can bypass it with a method to check if the phone is still turning on or not. So most of us technicians, when we discover that uh, IC, especially the DC to DC converter IC is heating up, uh, we give up because the IC is not working. If you bypass, the phone will turn on, but the phone will not charge again and the phone will not connect to system. So. Um, if the IC is not available and you want to bypass, you can bypass and the phone will turn on. You can even use that to know whether the phone is still functioning or not, okay? If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and see you in my next video. Bye for now. I love you all.